Ooh, caught up in the rapture of love, nothing else can compare when I feel the magic of you. Oh, hi. Okay, Nita Baker, caught up in the rapture of love, right? So we talked about the rapture uh, yesterday um, and uh, an LDS approach, maybe Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint, of which I am in good standing. Um, and I gave my thoughts on the, on the rapture based on some scriptures out of the Doctrine and Covenants and of course the New Testament. Rapture meaning caught up, I think a Latin word, and it's, uh, it's awesome to think about. It really is. So I, I was going to do a, a video, in which I will later on, on, on the New Jerusalem, uh, Zion, um, also tying in Adam on Diamond, Jackson County, Missouri, and how I think it all kind of fits. Um, but today, uh, kind of a spin-off, maybe a little bit on the rapture. Um, I, I want to go to this uh, article I've referred to. This uh, uh, It's in the April Ensign, this past April, and I've referred to it several times about, uh, from President Nelson. So uh, he talks about that Christ will govern from two world capitals, the old world, uh, in Jerusalem, and then the new Jerusalem, Jerusalem built upon the American continent. And he refers to the Doctrine and Covenants, uh, or excuse me, he refers to the um, Article of Faith, the 10th Article of Faith. He doesn't refer to any of the scriptures in the Doctrine and Covenants uh, concerning the new Jerusalem. I think that's interesting. I, I think sometimes we learn more about what the prophet doesn't say as, as much as what we learn of what he does say. So his only reference to the, to the New Jerusalem is our, is our article of faith where we say that, uh, that the New Jerusalem will be built on, on the American continent. Okay, So that's interesting. From these centers, the one in Jerusalem and the one on the American continent, he will direct the affairs of the church and kingdom. Another temple will yet be built in Jerusalem. From that temple, he shall reign forever as Lord of Lords. Water will issue from under the temple. Waters of the Dead Sea will be healed. Now, I've read that several times, what the prophet has said on other, on other uh, videos. I want to keep mentioning that. Th this is major, uh, Im of, of major importance, that we have a living prophet talking about a temple to be built in Jerusalem and that Christ will reign there forever, from there forever and ever, okay? And that the Dead Sea waters will be healed and water will issue from under the temple. He's talking about Ezekiel. He's talking about Revelation. He's talking about wonderful uh, uh, scriptures that are all pointing towards events that, that precede the second coming shortly before the second coming and the second coming and and even conditions after the second coming that's that's what i want to talk a little bit about in that day so when he's ruling from jerusalem he will bear new titles and be surrounded by special saints <laughs> have you guys ever heard that before special saints he will be known as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. So th those are those are uh, his new titles, right? Um, and they that will be with him will be those who are called and chosen and faithful. Okay, now this is what I wanted to talk about because I think this this idea of, of being called chosen and faithful
pardon me. So, and then he finishes, uh, and that that's a uh, the reference was given Revelation seventeen fourteen, called, chosen, faithful. The power of three again, folks. Called, chosen, faithful. Revelation seventeen fourteen to their trust here in mortality. So these people are here, mortal. They've been here, they've experienced mortality, and they've proven themselves, right? Then he shall reign forever and ever, Revelation eleven fifteen. Look at where these scriptures are coming from and, and listen to them because this, John the Revelator had the privilege of giving us the information about the time that we are living in the last dispensation, the seventh seal, um, all the events preceding the second coming and the second coming itself, all within the seventh seal and towards the beginning of the seventh seal because Christ will reign for a thousand years. But it doesn't have to happen exactly right at the beginning of the seventh seal. Nothing ever does, but it, it will be towards the, 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 uh, the beginning, right? Okay. Now listen to this. The earth will, will be returned to its paradisiacal state and be made new. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. Revelation 21.1, Ether 13.9, Doctrine and Covenants 29, 23 and 24. It is our charge. It is our privilege to help prepare the world for that day. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this uh, called, chosen, and faithful. Um, now, I think when we, we use the word called, we most of us in the, in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we immediately go to section 121. So why don't we just do that? Let's go to section 121. 121, the great, great, section uh, where so much was revealed during horrible, horrible time in Liberty Jail. And this wonderful revelation came uh, to the prophet Joseph under these crazy conditions he was in. So, so we're going to go through and, and read this very familiar scripture and see if we can't get some insights out of it, right? Behold, there are many called, but few are chosen. And then he tells us why they are not chosen. So you can be called, but then you need to be chosen, and then you need to be faithful. Right? Okay. Um, and here's why they were called, but not chosen. It's interesting he goes negative right off the bat. Many are called, but few are chosen. Instead of going, hey, there's going to be some called, and some chosen, and some are going to be faithful. It's going to be awesome. He immediately goes negative on this particular revelation. And why are they not chosen? Because their hearts are set so much upon the things of this world. Hmm, what could that be? Things of this world. I'll let you guys decide about that. I have my opinions on it. Um, Obviously, wealth, money has to do with it, but the things of this world, oh, you know, just watch the news and see everything that's consuming everybody, destroying cities, separating families, people within the church arguing with each other over just the dumbest things, and it's all things of the world, okay? My opinion. Um because their hearts are set so much upon the things of this world and they aspire to the honors of men that they do not learn this one lesson, one lesson, <laughs> that the rights of the priesthood are inseparably connected with the powers of heaven and that the powers of heaven cannot be controlled nor handled only upon the principles of righteousness." the son of righteousness. Righteousness is Jesus Christ, the principles of Jesus Christ. And that's really the, the, whole, the whole thing, um, the principles of righteousness. So if we want to 
be called, that's, that's great. That's a good thing. But if we want to be chosen, um, we have to do just the opposite of what he says. Um, we don't set our things upon the, the, our hearts upon the things of the world. We don't aspire to the honors of men. And, and we learn that we need to be righteous servants of our heavenly father and that that connects us, that connects us to him. And maybe, just maybe, that's the qualification to be that special saint that President Nelson is talking about because that word chosen kind of connects us with that verse. Let's go to another verse of scripture. Actually, let me, let me just... Um, uh, uh, while we're in section 121, um, well, l- I'm not going to read it all, but l- let me read this part here. We have learned from sad experience that is the nature and disposition of almost all men. <laughs> as soon as they get a little authority as they suppose, so it's, in their head that they have this authority, they will immediately begin to exercise unrighteous dominion. Hence, many are called, but few are chosen. Man, I love that. We, I know you guys have heard this, but I've got to say it. So I was on a mission as a youngster. Uh, this wasn't when I was a mission president, but when I was a youngster in, in uh, Canada, uh, up in Newfoundland, uh, we use that scripture, and uh, and every missionary uses it when they're in a cold place. But we we would say, um, "Many are cold, but few are frozen." <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Now a few verses after that. This is verse forty-five. Let thy bowels also be full of charity towards all men. And to the household, unto the household of faith. Now there's that word faithful, right? So we have chosen, we, we, we have called, chosen, and faith, household of faith. And let virtue garnish thy thoughts unceasingly. Then shall thy confidence wax strong in the presence of God. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. And I think... I really think this is what that scripture or, or, or what that, uh, yeah, that scripture that President Nelson was referring to where we can be special saints with God, with Christ, right? And okay, so in the presence of God and the doctrine of the priesthood shall distill upon thy soul as the dews from heaven, a reference from Deuteronomy uh, 32, 2, I believe. I think so. So the dues from heaven. Now, uh, I might have mentioned this before in one of my videos, but when, um, as as part of a survival skill and and things where where you're out in a desert uh, situation where there's no water, if you have a couple of items, you can always obtain water. And, And one of them you can make is a solar steel. A solar steel. So, so think of how this is worded. And the doctrine of the priesthood shall distill. It's a purification process. Shall distill upon thy soul as the dews from heaven. So a lot of survivalists um, learn uh, some, some things. I'll get back to the desert situation here in a second. But... but you know that dew point. We have it here where we live, in uh, up in the the hills a little bit. And in the morning, um, virtually every morning in the summer, there's a lot of dew on the grass. And you can literally take a, a you know, if you have a, a a neckerchief or something, you can take it and wipe the grass and and squeeze that water into your mouth from the dew, and you can actually survive that way because it's, it's been naturally purified, naturally purified, the dews from heaven, um, which, which is awesome. Now, the distilling part 
is, is a cool process. It's a cool process. And to demonstrate that, I'm not going to demonstrate it, but to, to describe a demonstration of it is, is really interesting. So if you have a, a, a large, pretty good sized sheet of clear plastic, um, and if you have a t- some tubing and, and, and you um, don't want to carry water, you don't want to have to worry about water and you're in a desert hot situation, you can actually create a solar steel. Okay. So what you do is you dig a, a hole in the sand, dirt, you know, whatever you can do. You put a, 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 a a canister or something to, to hold the water in the bottom of that hole. You then put the plastic over, uh, yeah, you put plastic over the hole. You have a can in the center and you put a rock. You seal the plastic around with, with dirt, sand, rocks. You seal that plastic. And then you put a rock in the middle and hopefully you have that can right underneath there or a bottle or something that can hold the water that, that's, in, that's right underneath that rock and the plastic in between it. So it kind of creates a, you know, a thing like this and it's sealed around. Well, this might sound a little graphic, but if you urinate right next to that hole or, or yeah, on the edge, um, and if you can get multiple individuals to do that, if you're in a group, um, the process of the heat hitting the ground, that moisture distills. So what what was once maybe contaminated and not good or you know uh, not pure uh, moisture water, it it goes through a purification process. It condenses or distills and it goes up and hits the bottom of that plastic. And then the plastic with that rock in the middle underneath, it, 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 it distills up underneath the plastic. The droplets go in and fill up that water and you'll be amazed at how much water it produces. Now, if you're really tricky, you could put a hose, uh, a, a tubing inside that can so you don't have to tear that apart and just just drink it. Just drink it and leave your solar still up. Go out, go do your activities and you have plenty of water. It's an amazing thing. I probably didn't destru- describe it very well. But what it does is it is it puts in here what the Lord is requiring us to do and, and what he's requiring, requiring us to do is, is to have the spirit distill upon us in a pure way so that we can receive it in a pure way so that we can not only be called, but we can be chosen and we can be faithful. Now let's go to another scripture real quick. Um, I didn't mean to go this long, but I get I get distracted very, very easily, as you can tell. Um, um, and I could talk more about that, but I'm not going to. Okay, so so we are in um, we are in section 105. Real interesting section 105. Um. Verily I say unto you, it is expedient, uh, I'm going to skip that part, uh, 34, and let those commandments which I, has give, which I have given concerning Zion and her law be executed and fulfilled after her redemption. There's a whole sermon right there. But then, then listen to this. There has been a day of calling, but the time has come for a day of choosing and let those be chosen that are worthy, powerful, and it shall be manifest unto my servant by the voice of the Spirit, and that's what we were talking about, those that are chosen and they shall be sanctified. Wow. So this is a purification process that we're talking about. And I, I will tell you, um, 
from my experience and from um, and from and from my heart that the sanctification process, the purification process, the the uh, the process of being not only called but chosen and then faithful um, isn't an easy process. It's it's not one of quickness. Um, if if you if you're the type of person that wants things and want it now, um, this this is kind of a hard thing to obtain, in my opinion. In my opinion, and maybe this is just a personal thing for me. Um, but time, patience, long suffering, <laughs> and diligence, and recognizing the imperfections and calling upon Heavenly Father for forgiveness. Constant repenting, not in a negative way, but just turning to God and, and thanking him for his son, Jesus Christ. There's a, there's a purification process that goes through, and it is only through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that this can occur. And it's not a one-time event. It's not a one-time event. It's a constant, it's, it's, it's a constant state of being, in my opinion in my opinion. So in essence, from this scripture, let me read that again. There has been a day of calling, but the time has come for a day of choosing. And let those be chosen that are worthy. It's almost like he's saying, you, me, we can choose to be chosen. We can choose to be chosen. And if you think about it, that's the ultimate in agency, to choose to be chosen. Not that Christ is just going to choose you randomly, but because of the agency of man, we get to choose to be chosen, and we get to choose to be faithful, and we get to choose to initially be called. Yeah. So, I, I feel like that's a bit of a, a wrap-up to some degree on the topic of, of rapture and these interesting people, special saints, that get to be with the Lord Jesus Christ and come back down after their earthly experience, come back down after they've been quickened and, and help the Savior do this wonderful work that just continues. Oh, I love it. Well, I really, really, really appreciate from the bottom of my heart the, the comments and people reaching out that I have so much respect for. Um, on my last video, I was, I was really taken back. I was touched. Um, it's kind of cool to, to know that <sighs> there's other people out there thinking the same thing and it's, it's humbling how the Spirit's working um, during these crazy times. I, I have to admit, <laughs> I kind of like it. I kind of like the, uh, the excitement of, of all the things I'm looking. I, I, you know, I, I'm a doomsdayer maybe, I guess. But, but I, I see the, 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 the beauty of God's hand in so many things and the forgiveness that people have for others. There's, there's some wonderful things going on, along with a lot of crazy stuff too. So my testimony has strengthened because of the testimony of many of you and those that have made comments and, and reached out and, and that I, you know, I was kind of blown away, really. It was really touching. I, I didn't know what to think. Um, I'm just a guy that has, you know, an opinion like anybody else, I guess. And you know what they say about opinions, you know, they're like armpits. Everybody has a couple and they usually stink. And I, I, I hope mine don't, my opinions. I don't, I don't want to ever offend, but, but sometimes you just have these, these strong convictions. And, and it was just so um, humbling to think of, of other people out there 
that have done so much and, and shared so much, you know, you get these insights and, and we're supposed to share them. We really are. Um, I, I don't understand the idea of not wanting to share the, the insights. That's the very essence of, for me, the gospel, the good news. What good is the good news if it's not shared, right? So um, please feel free to comment, uh, you know, disagree. I'm really working hard on not getting into uh, arguments with people because I have that um, uh, tendency. It's just, it's always been in me to dig in my heels and, and uh, through time I've, I've learned to do better, but I, I have a long ways to go. So, so I'm not promising, <laughs> I, I promise I'm, I'm going to do better, but I'm not promising that I'll be perfect at that. But, but typically, if I see a comment that goes against, I'll say, hey, you know, let's, let's talk about this or, or show me where, you know, where I'm wrong. And I'll tell you, my source is the scriptures. It really is. Now, obviously, I want that confirmation of the Holy Ghost, but my source is the scriptures. And we are so blessed as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to have the volumes of scriptures that we have in addition to the Holy Bible which I truly love, uh, but to have the Book of Mormon, to have the Doctrine and Covenants of Pearl of Great Price is such a huge blessing and a resource. And then a living prophet, are you kidding me? Um, it's, 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 it's awesome. So God bless y'all. I know I went a little long today, but uh, let's hang in there. And uh, I look forward to, I, I have a few others just in the mill in my mind. You can tell that I, I kind of shoot from the hip a little bit um, and, and definitely not perfect and polished in this, but I hope you felt the spirit of this and that it helps you um, be more connected to our Heavenly Father. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.